Good happy Sunday morning, everyone. I'm Riley King, and welcome to the Riley King Newscast, right here on the Riley King Network. Let's begin. First up, New Hampshire maple producers tap new trees after losing dozens to wind. Let's take a listen to the video from WMUR News 9. Let these both support the immune system? Mm. Too many choices? Well, along with digestive health, Floristore provides an extra layer of immune support. Really? Mm hmm Unlike many other probiotics, Floristore stimulates the production of IgA. IgA? Oh, IgA is a protein that promotes health and defense against infection. All right. I'll try it. Woo! See you later, ladies. <laughs> Be biotic with Floristore. Most of these trees were tabbed last week, about a month behind last year. Local watch the weather all season long. It takes us about four days to tap 6,000 trees. It's hard work, but the end result is so sweet. Pat Colby and his wife own and operate Maple Ridge Sugar House in Loudoun. Inconsistent temperatures in January had them tapping a few weeks later than they would have liked to. There was a lot of producers that started earlier, um, but there was a couple of warm days and it'd be cold for a few days and a couple of warm days. It just didn't seem feasible to us to go out and tap as early as we did last year because there wasn't a big enough stretch of warm weather. Colby says they spend a lot of time out in the woods, especially this year, having to clear out down trees after some strong windstorms in the fall. We had a lot of windblown trees. We lost a lot of trees this year, so, you know, everything takes time and, you know, you can't can't rush it because if you rush it, it's just not going to be good. Sap from the trees flows into a large tub. <laughs> where it's pumped out and follows the tubes up to the barn where it's boiled and eventually turned into all sorts of sweet treats, including real maple syrup. If you read your log cabin, there's zero maple syrup in it. It's high fructose corn syrup. So you want, you know, support your local farms, whether it's, you know, a maple farm or a dairy farm. Just, you know, you got to keep it local and New Hampshire made. Colby says the weather this coming week will be ideal for them, which is great news since they'll be getting ready for Maple Month that starts in two weeks. Reporting loud in Siobhan Lopez, WMUR News 9. Okay, and there you go on that video and that report. Sounds like a fun thing. Maple syrup, good to have for your pancakes and your French toast. Okay, we're having a little technical difficulties. Give me one minute until we get sorted up. Sorry about the technical difficulties this morning. Woman dead after double stabbing inside library. Let's take a listen to the video from WCVB Boston. Place of serene silence, the scene of a violent stabbing Saturday morning. There was a, a woman taken out, uh, and uh, I didn't get close to her, but it appeared that she had some injury to the uh, shoulder. That 22-year-old woman was in the reading room of Winchester's library around 10 a.m., studying when police say 23-year-old Jeffrey Yao approached her from behind. Mr. Yao began striking her with what we now know to be a appears to be a hunting knife with approximately a 10-inch blade. She suffered a number of slash and stab wounds to the head and upper torso. A 77-year-old man stepping in to try and save the young woman. He, too, was stabbed in the chaos, the victim running for help. She had left the table, attempted to get into the front lobby, headed apparently towards the door of the library. 
number of patrons came to her aid. Though that help came quickly and in abundance, it was too late. The motive or even a connection between Yao and the now deceased woman is unclear. Meanwhile, residents in this quiet town are absorbing the shock of a tragedy unfolding in the most unlikely of places. People say, do things like this happen here? Well, not really, but things like this happen everywhere. And we've learned it was witnesses that were able to corner Yao until police arrived. He has been charged with murder and assault with attempt to murder. He will be arraigned on Monday in Woburn District Court. We're live in Winchester, Nicole Estefan, WCBB, News Center 5. Okay, and there you go on that video and that report. Crews perform water rescue on Sabago Lake. Several emergency crews responded to Costco for a water rescue Saturday. Cumberland County Dispatches said it happened on Sabago Lake off Point Sabago Road just after 5.30 p.m. Further information has not been released. This is a developing story. Check back for further updates as we get more information into our newsroom. Democrats release Radic memo pushing back on GOP claims of DOJ abuse. Let's take a listen to the video from ABC News. This is the only stable, uninterruptible power. Once we set this up, it can generate 30 years of power for the emergency room. We begin with the firestorm over that classified memo written by congressional Republicans. President Trump declassifying it, and tonight it's now been made public. Despite, quote, grave concerns from the FBI and from the president's own pick for FBI director, Christopher Wray. The president tonight calling the alleged behavior described in the memo, quote, a disgrace. Democrats tonight say it is misleading and an attempt to undermine special counsel Robert Mueller, who, of course, still wants to interview the president. So what's in the memo? Here's ABC's chief White House correspondent, Jonathan Carl, tonight. Before the public even saw the newly declassified Republican memo, President Trump was portraying it as a bombshell. I think it's terrible. You want to know the truth? I think it's a disgrace. What's going on in this country, I think it's a disgrace. A lot of people should be ashamed of themselves, and much worse than that. The controversial memo was written by the Republican staff of the House Intelligence Committee, chaired by Devin Nunes, a close Trump ally. The memo focuses entirely on one narrow aspect of the Russia investigation, a warrant to monitor the communications of Carter Page, a former Trump campaign foreign policy advisor. The Obama Justice Department went to a secret intelligence court to apply for the warrant in October 2016. According to the Republican memo, an essential part of the application was the now infamous dossier on Russian meddling and Team Trump, written by former British spy Christopher Steele. The memo claims the judge who approved the warrant was never told the dossier was paid for by the Democratic National Committee and the Clinton campaign and that the judge never knew that Steele allegedly told a senior justice official that he was desperate that Donald Trump not get elected and was passionate about him not being president. The memo says that former Deputy FBI Director Andrew McCabe told the House Intelligence Committee that no surveillance warrant would have been sought without the Steele dossier information. But Democrats on the committee say that's misleading. As they have cherry-picked information from the FISA application. They've also cherry-picked 
information from Mr. McCabe. Democrat Adam Schiff says McCabe portrayed the dossier as one of many key pieces of information used to get the warrant to monitor Carter Page. As ABC News has previously reported, Page was on the FBI's radar since 2013 because of his suspicious contacts with Russian operatives. In 2016, when the Trump campaign was pressed to list their foreign policy advisors, Page's name was on their short list. But last year, Page's Russia ties came under growing scrutiny, including questions about whether he ever met with the Russian ambassador at the Republican convention. Did you meet Sergey Kislyak? In Cleveland, did you talk to him? I, I'm not going to deny that I talked with him. Page has denied any wrongdoing, but the president has distanced himself. I don't think I've ever spoken to him. I don't think I've ever met him. And he actually said he was a very low-level member of, I think, a committee for a short period of time. I don't think I ever met him. Now, it's possible that I walked into a room and he was sitting there, but I don't think I ever met him. The Republican memo released today lists several current and former law enforcement officials involved in applying for the surveillance warrant, including former FBI Director James Comey and Deputy Attorney General Rod Rosenstein, the official overseeing Robert Mueller's special counsel investigation into Russian meddling. Several people close to the president tell ABC News Trump has been deeply frustrated with Rosenstein. <laughs> You, you figure that one out. All right, so let's go live to John Carl at the White House tonight. And John, we just heard President Trump, but tonight the White House insists there are no discussions or considerations of firing Rod Rosenstein. David, that is the official word here at the White House tonight, but the tension is real. Rosenstein joined with Christopher Wray, the FBI director, in pleading with the White House not to release this Republican memo. And early this morning, the president lashed out at the leadership of the Justice Department and the FBI, tweeting that, quote, they have politicized the sacred investigative process in favor of Democrats. Keep in mind, those are people who are lifelong Republicans appointed by President Trump. John Carl leading us off tonight. Okay, and there you go on that video and that report. And... That does it for the Riley King Newscast right here on the Riley King Network. I hope you all have a great rest of your Sunday and a great rest of your day. And I'll see you back here later on today. Goodbye, everyone.